Boy, well, I will tell you this much. If you're a fan of offense, you've likely turned off the TV already. There has been nothing here but a bunch of teams and inept offenses that just cannot get it going. And uh, I would know a thing or two about inept offenses. But anyway, right now it's looking pretty interesting. Michigan and Rutgers just kicked off the second half. Michigan only up 14-7. to That's quite strange. You know, Rutgers, while they are improving, I do think they are on the, on the right track with Greg Schiano. There's absolutely no reason that Michigan should be only leading by a touchdown at the half. I expect for them to pull away going into this second half, but man, they just cannot get it together running the ball. That's, I think, the base, biggest concern. Blake Corum, 13 carries. Um, you know, he only had like 50-something uh, yards. So, you know, it's it's not looking too good running the ball-wise for Michigan, and they absolutely need a good run game in order to contend for a championship. So, in my opinion, they need to start finding ways to open up the run game, especially against a team like Rutgers. So, you know, they got. I think they'll get it together. I think they'll clutch up. I think they'll start uh, running away with this game. Uh, oh, big shocker right here. Well, at least for some of us, Clemson up 17-14 on Florida State. Uh, <laughs> You know, if I always found it weird that Clemson sitting in this match unranked and they were also the underdogs going into this game. I'd imagine that would have lit a fire under Clemson, and it seems to be the case. Cade Klubnick is lighting up this Florida State defense. Uh, and on the other side, Jordan Travis just looks kind of lost, to be honest. He he definitely looks like, you know, he's very desynced, if, if we can put it that way. You know, overthrowing receivers, just kind of running around and not really, I mean, he's making plays where he needs to, just not enough plays. So, you know, the way things look right now, this could be a very interesting game that goes down to the wire. I don't expect either of these teams to pull away. We saw Florida State last week. They were very fortunate not to lose to Boston Friggin College, one of the worst teams in the ACC. And now here they are fighting in a dogfight against Clemson and Death Valley. So who knows? Um, this will be very interesting to see how this plays out. Uh, good news is this isn't a must-win situation for Florida State. If they lose this game, uh, they won't be... I mean, they'll, they'll have to win out at that point, but they'll still be uh, on the right track to possibly make the playoffs. They'll at least be able to make the ACC championship game. Who knows? Uh, but you, you absolutely need this game in Death Valley. And this is a noon kickoff. Imagine losing in a Death Valley stadium at noon. I wouldn't know. Anyway... Uh, Oklahoma and Cincinnati, that just hit the half. I saw Cincinnati's last drive. They got all the way down to the 20, I think, and then they kicked the field goal, missed it. So Cincinnati just cannot get anything going offensively, and their defense is actually playing pretty well. I know Dylan Gabriel's got over 200 yards passing, but but they've only held uh, Oklahoma to 10 points. So all things considered, that is a pretty, pretty good uh, game by the defense. But they absolutely need to get it under control uh, offensively. Otherwise, they're going to start getting destroyed, I think, by Oklahoma. Eventually, Oklahoma is going to start opening up that uh, run game. Or they're just going to start opening up their offense more. So I think Cincinnati just needs to figure out some way, somehow, to score. I think that's kind of the key there, I would imagine. And then some of these other games, kind of sleepers. Uh, and you want to talk about a sleeper team, two sleeper teams here. You want to take a guess at what the Texas A&M-Auburn score looks like without even looking it up. Well, this is the most Texas A&M and the most Auburn score I think I've ever seen in my life. Six to three at half. Uh, I made the mistake of thinking that uh, Texas A&M only got their points from that scooping score, but I think that got reversed. I don't know, but now it's, you, you never really know what's going on with these two teams. But anyway, yeah, it's six to three right now. Uh, Connor Wayman, under 100 yards passing, only 76 yards. Just not a good game offensively by either of these teams. They're playing some decent defense. It's just that the offenses are so inept and so vanilla that they just n nobody can score. So, you know, this is it, it's just like one of those things, man. It's just like watching Iowa play Iowa. You know, you don't want to you don't want to stand around and watch it too much. You know, that's just that's just the way it is. So. <sighs> Did you guys know Auburn's undefeated, by the way? I didn't know that. That's kind of shocking. Uh, but man, if they if Auburn wins this game, you think they'll you, th you think they'll go to game day in uh, uh, Jordan Hare next week when they host Georgia? I don't know. Maybe, maybe. But I wouldn't want to. You know, I want I wouldn't want to host a game where I have to play Mickey Mouse either. Anyway, uh, going into the half, uh, some of these other games here. None none of the others are too interesting. Marshall's beating Virginia Tech. Uh oh, another Power Five program losing to a Group of Five program. Tisk tisk, tisk to the tisk. Uh, and then Vandy. 
Yeah, welcome back to reality, Vandy. You know, you had your you had you had your Cinderella season where you won five games last year, but reality is not too kind to you this time. You lose to UNLV last week. You're sitting at two and two now, and you absolutely need to go three and one or four zero to even have a chance of making a bowl. You didn't do that, and now you are here getting destroyed by Kentucky. And this is a game that I thought in the off season that Vandy was going to win, and I had them winning five games in my off season predictions. So. In my mind, the fact that they're getting whooped by Kentucky, there's just no hope for them. I think they're not winning an SEC game this year. And chances are they aren't winning more than three games. If that, I think they're stuck. At, I think the rest of this season is just going to be L after L after L after L. It's just not, not looking good for Vandy. You know, I thought they'd get it together. I thought they really did. And Devin Leary has not thrown a touchdown pass yet. In fact, he's thrown an interception. And well, while Vandy has managed to put up 10 points... Kentucky has put up more. Vandy's just been capable of stopping the run. It's just not looking good for, for you boys. Uh, and also, A.J. Swan throwing a pick six. That certainly doesn't help out your case either. So, it's just mistakes after mistakes. And, you know, their defense can't stop nobody. And their offense ain't doing them any favors either. Now, and, oh, Vandy doesn't have as much talent as some of these other teams. Well, boo-hoo! What is this? Year three under, uh, under um, Clark Lee? You know, there's no excuse to be coming out and then just collapsing and crashing and then for the third year in a row blaming death. You got to be able to build something there. And if, you know, either you accept reality that you're just going to kind of lose a bunch of games in the SEC or you got to start recruiting better. You got to start getting some of these other guys in here. You got to start building a team and you just not have you just haven't been doing that. So this is what happens. And uh, that's just all there is to it. So. You know, you know. That's all the way I see it. Alright, see you guys later. BPD.